Hi everyone, this is Mike 89 welcome to the ninth video in my Sonic 3 & Knuckles tutorial series. Uh, this video is going to cover Sandopolis, and Sandopolis is a kind of unique level in that it's very cycle based, and that means that there's a lot of obstacles that move in and out of, uh, out of your path. So, there are some situations where it's okay to be a little bit slow, but then there are some where you've got to really motor. Uh, so let's have a look at those now. So start off with just jump out of here, jump up here. I uh, need to push this platform along. What we're going to do is just watch, basically draw a line down from this last spike. And when Sonic's back spike, this one here, uh, comes into line with that with that li imaginary line down from that back last spike. Uh, that's when it's safe to jump over that. Uh, on this platform, uh, wait for this to hit to come down to ground level. So you could spin dash now, but that'll you won't get enough speed to get up the next ramp. So wait for this to come down to ground level and spin dash then. And don't touch anything on your way up here. Sometimes if you're really unlucky, then you'll just get stopped here. And you'll see Sonic just standing here and then you'll fall back down. Uh, if this happens, you want to immediately move to the left. Because if you fall straight down, you're going to go down the ramp and then down the other side. And that takes 30 or more seconds to recover from. Whereas if you move left, then you at least give yourself the chance to spin Nash back up the ramp and save face. Um, okay, this jump is kind of tricky. It needs to be from about this angle here so that you go almost perfectly horizontal and keep most of your speed. It looks kind of like that. And if it works properly, then you'll just go straight through those two sandfalls without losing much speed at all. Um, it's fairly common to get slightly lesser speed than that, and if that happens, then you're going to get quite slowed down by the first one, and as you come through here, you want to actually slow yourself down so you don't even end up in the second one at all. Drop down to the left side of it and do a spin dash from there. Just from this side here which won't lose you much time compared to this at all. Uh, jump over that rock, land here, spin dash, and then jump up to here. Now, see there's a tiny little ramp here. What we're going to do is we're going to stop there, spin dash, jump immediately, and that will clear this section entirely. We'll see what that looks like. And you land right up against this rock, and then you want to quickly jump on it and move into the sandfall. Now, um, as you do that, keep your eye on the timer. You want to be inside the sandfall before it goes to 24 seconds. And in this case, I was. And then what we're going to do, we're going to move out. So holding right all the way here, and you drop out, land on this, move to the right. And then you're going to jump, and you'll just get through here before before it crushes you. Um, in order to give yourself a little bit more time, when you land on the platform, hold down to start rolling. And you'll see, jump, roll, and then you land there and you carry on. Now that's a really important cycle to make. Uh, you'll lose six seconds if you can't make that cycle. Because that's how long it takes for the platform with the spikes to open up again. Anyway, red spring. Uh, you want to jump off this ramp here. Not the, not the small one you just went past, but that big one there. Uh, stop here. Again, we're going to use a little ramp here to clear... A large gap coming up. Roll through this guy. Push the platform along. Um, now, if you remember Hydrosity 1, there's a similar spin dash jump here. Uh, this is really tricky 
because it's a smaller platform than that one. But I want you to stand on the left hand side of it, do a three tap spin dash, and jump immediately. Like that. And then when you get up next to this enemy, don't release this spin dash until you verify that this enemy is actually dead. Um, that's a principle in general with these things. It's very easy to release the spin dash too early because it looks like they should be dead long before they actually are. Uh, so that's a full spin dash and then slow yourself down just a little bit so that you hit that wall, drop straight down, and then you're facing left so you spin dash out to the left. Uh, as we go through here you can see there are two ramps again, one, two. Uh, you need to do a jump off one of these. That's the only way up to this platform. The platform that's down here is too low to jump up to. Uh, if you miss the jump, you then have to go all the way back to that red spring earlier. <clears throat> uh, as you can see at the moment, that platform's closed, so even if you're a second or two slow through that section, you still won't lose any time there. <clears throat> uh, here there's a, um, there's a ramp that flings you off to the right hand side. Uh, we don't want to take that, we're going to jump over this and down into the pit here. And again, there were two ramps there. Jump off the second one, and that lets you clear this loop entirely. Uh, the one mistake in this level is that if you get a jump from about the flat part of the top here, it is possible to get through this plat. Uh, through this platform before it closes up. Now again, if you're going for that, you want to hold down and make sure that you roll through, give yourself a little bit more time. And if it doesn't work, obviously you just have to wait like this. That jump is a bit tricky to get the height on properly. Um, okay, now this is important where this platform is. As you can see, it's at its highest point. Uh, the ideal case is that you get here and it's actually blocking your way and, it's mo and it moves up and then you spin dash through immediately. If that's the case, then we don't have to worry about any fancy timing after the boss ends. I'll explain that in a minute. <clears throat> so, nothing to see here. But the reason that the, the cycles continue to matter here is that those cycles continue into Act 2. So the time in Act 1 is important, because, especially since Act 2 starts on a cycle. So we want to be ready to clear that right away. Now, as this boss jumps out to the edge of the pyramid here, that's where its next jump is going to be. Uh, as it lands, make a note of the time. So just tick 2.12 as it landed. Uh, so when you see that, I want you to wait two and a half seconds and then run into the boss and take a hit. So about 2.14 and a half, run into it, take a hit. So you're going to get knocked into the sand. Then as soon as you land in the sand, you jump out so that you're on the right hand side of the boss as it jumps into this position. And from here... You want to hit the head of it from the left hand, from the right hand side, so that it gets knocked into the pit. It is very important that you don't insta shield this hit, 
Because for some reason, if you do, the game sometimes thinks that you actually got the hit from the left-hand side, and it will knock the golem to the right instead. So, here's what that looks like. Jump out, jump back to the left, and now move... Um, oh, no, don't move all the way across the right yet. Now, again, look at the time. With Sonic, the time that I normally use as my reference is 227. 227, if you get a 227, um, the platform that's at the start of Act 2 will open up nicely for you. Uh, and that cycle continues every 6 seconds. So a 221 is also fine. A 215 is also fine. A 217 is not fine. So what we want to do is we want to waste four seconds. And every time that we hit the signpost here, uh, it's going to add a little over a second. So we're going to hit it three times. And on the third time, we're going to knock it right out of the way so it doesn't hit any of the boxes and waste another second. And so immediately as Act 2 starts, you do a one-tap spin dash and jump. And as you can see, this platform here is at its lowest point. And you can jump straight over it. Uh, next, next you want to do a spin dash. Insta-shield here so that you have the control to grab that. Uh, now push this all the way down because that... Um, that switch there not only controls this door, but also one up ahead that has a lightning shield behind it. This one here. So you want to make sure that you're facing left going up that sandfall. So that you can spin that straight through there. Um, this is another example where you want a jump from about that ramp there that sends you flying almost horizontally. Uh, this is another level where the screen wrap is possible. So we want to hold down all the way, jump, spin dash, and that'll get you through to this slide here. Um, now we don't want to jump off the slide until it goes flat. There's actually not a lot of room to get this jump. And then from there, just a lightning jump up to this platform here. Um, from here, what you want to do is jump over the switch, land about here, do a three tap spin dash, and that gives you exactly enough height to get up to here. That's what's meant to happen. Uh, there, I did a two tap spin dash by mistake. Uh, if that happens, you obviously won't get the height. But you can see this platform here, you can actually stand on. And if you jump off it really quickly, you can jump and then lightning shield up to the platform. If you wait too long though, uh, the platform will kind of fold in and you'll drop down a little bit. So you have to be really quick jumping off this platform. Like that. Um, here you want to be, you want to do a full jump from the side of this rock jump over it and don't touch anything else once you um, yeah so it's a full jump and then hold left against the left wall if this plat if the platform that's over here is in your way then move back to the left wait for it to move out of the way and do the jump again it's very important that the jump is from exactly this height so it has to be from the flat ground, even if the box is broken. And you have to hold it left against the wall. And you'll go straight through the floor like that. Now, once you're in here, you immediately jump out. So a jump here will push you straight down. Uh, tap right so you can spin dash off that way. Um, Uh, that's a one tap spin dash and you want to make sure that you're holding left as you go off the top here. You don't want to touch the sandfall 
and you definitely don't want to touch this platform. Because if you do and you walk off it and you fall, then once you get down here, you'll actually pass straight through this door. And it can be a pain to get out of again. Um, now you want to wait for this enemy to turn around. You want him to face right. And then jump up behind him. Do the spin dash and carry on. Uh, very important that you make that cycle. That's another one that costs a lot of time. And if you have to wait on it, then it will affect other cycles later on too. Uh, from just as the ground starts to slope down, I do a jump, and then as the ceiling goes away, you do a double jump. So, jump, and then just as, you can see, just as uh, the ceiling won't stop you, do a second jump, and you'll go up to the top of the loop. Uh, slow yourself down there so that you end up behind this uh, switch. And hit the sound switch there. Um, as Tails and Knuckles, there are strategies involving going into the wall in the second part. Uh, because you hit the sand switch, it's actually it actually means that that method won't work. Hitting if you hit the sand switch when you do the zip at the end, uh, you'll actually just die. So Sonic alone can't do that. What we're going to do at the moment though is using this platform here, which is moving out to the left. We're going to try and line Sonic up the steepest part of this slope. Here. So I'm going to jump so that it stops us, and then we're facing right, and then it's a spin dash jump off the steepest point, and skip the waiting for the sand to go up, like that. Um, okay, now this is slightly different to some of the other screen apps you do. Uh, this time, when the screen hits the bottom, we're going to spin dash and then jump. So one tap spin dash, immediately release and jump. Like that. So you have momentum going forwards as well. And then in order to make the screen scroll faster, you want to jump again as soon as you hit the ground. And that'll also break that, that switch there. Uh, now we got to wait a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, so we're waiting for... Basically, we want the sand level here to come into line with the bottom of this. And then... Grab the speed shoes, stop here, spin dash facing left, and release it as late as, as, late as you dare, basically. And then... Again, you're trying to hit the steepest part of this slope. And if you hit it just right, which I haven't here, you can see I've jumped way too early. If you hit it just right, you can do a jump and then insta uh, lightning shield up onto the top of this platform. Uh, instead, you'll see that I have to wait for it. Which probably costs about two to three seconds. Uh, that platform there, if it's fully embedded into the ground, you can't get a lightning shield jump up to this platform. You have to wait for it to start moving up. Um, now, that jump there is just so you know where the platform is. So at the moment, you can see the platform's out this way. And if we advance the frames, we can see that it's moving anti-clockwise. So the next time it's going to be in range is over here on the left hand side. So that's where we're going to jump to as soon as we hit the ground. Uh, it's very important that
that we still have the lightning shield at this point. Because without the lightning shield, you cannot reach that platform until the sand comes up. And we're about 10, 15 seconds ahead of the sand. So any loss of the lightning shield there is really bad news. Uh, next, you just jump over the switch there. Uh, running off the platform there as opposed to jumping off it will make sure that you can land there safely. Uh, spin dash, jump, and double jump will get you past all of that. Uh, here, this platform on the left mirrors the platform here that you actually have to get past. So if it's moving down, that's good news because it means you can jump straight over. If it's moving up, you've got to wait. So again, we've got to keep the lightning shield. It actually helps you here having a lightning shield because you don't have to worry about timing moving right into the gap. You can just simply double jump out and be on your way. Uh, this is pretty simple, just hold right until the second run through this loop. Uh, now we want to jump from a very steep part of the loop. Jump, lightning shield gets us up there. Uh, now a lightning shield from this bottom platform will get us up to the top without using either of those platforms. So here, we probably don't need to open the door this much. So just jump here and land and go. Uh, you can see here that this platform is closing. Um, if it's any closer than this, I wouldn't go for it. I'd just wait. But... Because, because we have the momentum going that way, we can commit to going through it. And again, you want to roll to give yourself that little bit of extra time. Uh, here you want to open the door up to the last dot. There are four dots on each of these uh, platform, these switches. You want to open it up to the fourth dot because this, dot, this one closes quite quickly. Uh, now, you might be wondering what the deal with that is. That's very intentional. The best way to deal damage to this boss is with the Insta Shield. So, I immediately take a hit there. Wait for, wait for the platform to come down. Uh, I get four hits and then I move away. And then I can get four more. It is possible to get five the first time, but more often than not you'll just get hit. So it's not really worth it. And that is how you speedrun Sanopolis. I'm going to go back to the start and play the whole video without any interruptions.
Yeah. 